layout of the equipment here shows the top tank, which is what the turbine discharges into, and that flows through a V-notch weir into the bottom tank. This allows us a second way of measuring fluid flow, and the bottom tank is the tank from which the pump is drawing water. So that is then pumping water under pressure up the pipe into the turbine. We're providing pressurised water for the turbine from the pump, which is the device down underneath the um, top tank and with the pipe that comes up along. And we also, also measure the flow through the turbine using a Venturi device where we have the two pressure sensors uh, measuring the pressure at both the large diameter section and the small diameter section, and this allows you to calculate the flow. We've also got a manual clock there as well to give us a manual backup of the measurement. This is the heart of the test rig here. On the left hand end the grey device is a Francis turbine and on the right hand end the blue device is a motor and generator um, and we supply uh, water under pressure through the pipeline in the foreground into the turbine and then we can characterise its performance with water and with the uh, dense fluid. We are monitoring the uh, equipment with a pair of um, monitoring programs. One supplied by Danfoss who supply the drives and one um, which is related to an independent data acquisition system. We can monitor the drive and start it from the data acquisition software. So here we are looking at it. When we press start, you can see the current increase and the speed is ramped up to 20% of its normal full speed. That means the motor is rotating here, as you can see. The drive can feed back the speed of that. And we also have an inductive proximity sensor picking up on the uh, rotating coupling between the two elements. We can also operate the pump, and this allows us to run the motor as a generator. Initially here, we'll start it, and it will be just operating with no load on it at all. So the pump has started, the tank is filling up, and the um, Venturi is measuring differential pressures where the flow is flowing through it. And we can see as well that the speed is now ticking along at um, 170, 200 rotations, just counting the number of rotations. At this low speed it's possible to see the runner inside the turbine rotating. So the guide vanes around the outside introduce the water tangentially onto the runner. The water goes through the runner and exits out the stainless steel elbow, which is the draft tube back into the tank. This test rig is quite flexible because it allows us to operate the turbine under a range of inlet pressures and flow rates. So on the turbine itself there's a brass knurled um, knob which allows you to change the guide vane positions. At the moment they're 100% open. By operating this you can close them up. And so this allows us to produce different back pressures in the pipe and different flow rates. You can see that when you close that down, the turbine stops operating. And when you open it up, it restarts again. This, the mechanism for the turbine uh, vein movement is in the back of the turbine here. And we've got a potentiometer which allows us to accurately characterize that position without any backlash. We can now run the motor and the turbine together, which should allow us to see the turbine operating in a generating mode. We'll start by starting the video, the logging, and start the motor. It's going to run up to 50% of its normal speed. You can see on the graph now that the purple line has restarted and is tracking along second to top there, that's the motor current running in. When we start the turbine running, or run, start the pump running so that the turbine starts producing power, the 
turbo lines now drop down below zero, indicating the turbine is actually generating. And this is with water as the operating medium. Um, I just thought I'd give you a quick clue about the um, fluid here. I've got some in the machine and it's all whirling around. I mixed it for about an hour and a half, I suppose. But the mixer only went down to about this kind of level here. But all that being said, it appears to have mixed quite well. I haven't found any gloopy bits in the bottom. I'll do another video in a minute as I get into the dregs.